program designed to keep you informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. Now, if somebody asked me, hey, can I light you on fire? I would probably turn around and run as fast as I can. But my guest today actually turns towards him and says, go ahead, do it now. Now, before you get any weird ideas, that's because he's a stuntman, okay? So Rick Shaw has been in the movie business since the 1980s and has worked in every facet of stunts from coordinating to performing. With a degree in mechanical engineering from Ohio State University, he is highly qualified to design and build the machinery necessary to perform most any stunt in the, the production requires. In addition to his vast history as a stuntman, he has extensive experience in the field of pyrotechnics. Uh, some of his work in the faith-based uh, film world has been in The Reliant, Andy's Rainbow, Beautiful Prison, Beyond the Mask, Ragamuffin, The Rich Mullen Story, and where I met him, Turbulent, which is a movie that I executive produce. Rick, welcome to Faith on Film. Hi, Isaac. It's good to see you again. And uh, I think the last time I've seen you, you was running from bees uh, on a film we did together. And uh, I've never seen a man that big move that fast. Uh, That's so it was true. enjoyable to watch. That is so <laughs> true. I remember now. It's, uh, and some of, the, some of the actors had actually gotten stung. And man, I'm petrified of bees. They just scared the bejesus out of me. And so I remember all of a sudden I seen bees, man, and I just took off. <laughs> But yeah, you know what? Yeah, it, it was a challenging shoot, I guess. Um, uh, that we... It was, but the most memorable part for me was when we lit you on fire. That? Yeah, that was, uh, that turned out a lot better than I thought mm -hmm. it would. Um, we, we, we did the fire part first, and then I had the wired explosion second. So I wasn't feeling good from the exhaustion, from the heat, mm -hmm. uh, but we got it all done. It turned out well, and um, yeah, it was just it was we, a very uh, we did, good thing to do, I think. We did, and if you want to see uh, Rick's work in that movie, just look up Turbulent. I believe it's available on Pure Flix, maybe. Uh, so Rick, yeah. but we'll get to stunts and how you do all that work and everything, but before we do that, why don't you tell us how you even got started in the film industry, especially stunt work? Um, I grew up in Southern Ohio, and uh, I did attend church with my mom and dad, and my mm -hmm. mother taught Sunday school, and uh, my father drove a church bus into the city and brought uh, people to church and then sang in choir. Um, so I went through uh, church up to the point about 14 years old, and I'm like, why am I doing this? I never heard the calling. I never heard, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Jesus pulling on my heart in any way. I just couldn't hear it. Uh, so I walked away from, I said, Mom, you know, why should I go? She goes, son, I'll pray for you, just go once in a while. And I'm like, okay. So I did. Um, at the age of 16, so I left church at 14. At the age of 16, I started racing motocross. And I traveled around southern Ohio, various states. Um, and then a buddy of mine, father owned a Toyota dealership in Columbus, Ohio. And he asked me if I could, uh, you know, jump my motorcycle over five pickup trucks. I'm like, yeah, sure. I do it every day Whoa. during racing. So they use that in a local commercial in, uh, in Columbus. A uh, few months go by and I get a call from Toyota National and they say, hey, we're going to use that in a national commercial. Well, I had no clue what it was worth. So they made a money offer and I'm like, wow, uh -huh. okay, yeah, sure. You know, so they made the offer I accepted. And uh, from that, I went to a national Pepsi commercial. And um, so I was also going to Ohio State. I was studying mechanical engineering. And uh, so I stayed, I knew to stay with that. And I graduated uh, mechanical engineering in 1984. Um, so I, I, I tried the engineering world and I just was bored to death. Sitting at a cubicle, mm. looking at an auto yeah. cads and things of that nature bored me to death. Uh, when I was out racing motorcycles on the weekends, I had to go back to work. So it's kind of tough. Uh, so I decided, uh, man, it's something, you know, it, it's treated me well, just the little things I've done. And in 89, I packed up, moved to LA and started the career there. So I was mm. actually in Hollywood for 10 years and, uh, lived in Wizard Hills for a couple of years and moved out to Simi Valley. And, uh, so I kind of came up through the ranks of learning the stump business, you know, the sad card and, and, uh, all that, you know, was, uh, was top, you know, I had a stunt coordinator that took me under his wing and explained mm -hmm. the business side of it to mm -hmm. me and the, the, the yeah it's a very doggy dog world to be in when it comes to 
stops and motion pictures on the West Coast. This is before Atlanta and all that started firing up. So this was back in 89 when I moved out there. I, um, I was there until 98, and uh, my wife just got to the point she did not like L.A., and I got busted up a couple times, and uh, of course, I kept grinning and went right back to work the next day with broken ribs, but I got through it, and, uh, but I was learning, and uh, I came up with a group of guys that are doing very big now, you know, they're doing really well. Mm-hmm. So in 98, I was offered a job with the government, and that brought me back to, well, uh, indirect path back to Michigan. And uh, so my four kids were born in L.A., but I, I kind of wanted to get them out of there and raise them you know, here in the Midwest, the way I was raised, you know, I, I was raised in the country. Uh, right. You know, I, I was a different kid. You know, I used to jump off the house and blow stuff up and paid attention in chemistry class in high school and start putting more on the one together. And I'm going, man, I started asking questions. I guess I shouldn't have, but uh, I still got all my fingers. That's good. And uh, so things, things have went well. No complaints. Wow. Um, <clears throat> now, we're going to take a little break right now because I don't want to get you started on something and then we're going to have to cut you off. But I got a question for you, and, and uh, it's an important question that we can answer on the, on the next segment. That is, so you can think about it right now, do you think that maybe God is the one that called you into this particular area and, uh, you know, from, from early on? You didn't know it, but... Uh, but is, is there, do you feel like there's a calling? And the reason I ask that is because that's one thing that's missing in a lot of the Christian movies is, is the, the, the excitement, the stunt work, the action. Uh, and I know that that's how we ended up meeting was because you uh, ended up doing a Christian film with us. So think about that a little bit uh, and we, you can answer that when we get back, all right? Okay. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Ever wanted to binge watch family-friendly TV without all the commercials? Well, as a mother of two young children, it's vital that I have a platform I can trust. And 24 Flicks is where I find incredible movies, shows, comedy for me, and for my children as well. And for only $3.99 a month, it's a no-brainer for us. You can join other moms like me by going to 24flicks.com and get your seven-day free trial. Got a postcard from the grandkids. They went to the ark. Yeah. What does it say? Well, Annie says they had a blast and that it's really, really big. Everything looks big to a six-year-old. Well, Hudson says it's even bigger than the castle. It can't be that big. Can it? Go ahead. Think bigger. Film. We are here, by the way, this is a first for Faith on Film. The first time I have a stuntman or stunt coordinator or both, because I know he's going to explain that a little bit. But Rick, so, okay, I asked you a question before uh, on, the, on the previous segment, and that is, do you think this was a calling for you more just than, hey, I like the excitement and I like to blow things up? What, what, what do you feel in your heart about that? Um, there was a calling in, in a long drawn out process. I remember in, in, uh, back in the mid 90s, my son was 18 months old and he got spinal meningitis and we almost lost him. And I remember being called by the hospital, get there. Uh, and when I went in, he's hooked up to everything you can imagine on an 18 month old son. I 
I was in tears. And I remember going out to my Jeep. I said, I got to get out of there for a moment. And I think at that moment, um, man, God came. I, I was I was punching God. I was yelling like, why in the world? I give you every chance in the world to take my life and take the life of an innocent child. Oh. And I'm pounding on the mirror of this Jeep I'm driving and uh, glass and blood all over the place. And then I was like, I sat there and I looked down at my hand, you know, the blood coming out of I said, yeah, I get it. You know, it, it's kind of like God didn't speak to me, but I, I felt like it laid it in my heart to say, my son was taken too. You know, and I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, you have my attention. What do you want for me to do? You know, and uh, right. so I got my son back um, after, you know, two weeks in the hospital and back in a few times. So we, um, we moved to 98. You know, my wife at that time was like, we got to get out. I just want to move. And we did. So we moved. I came back, started going to church. I never really heard God too much until the time came. I gave my life to the Lord. And then the next weekend, I'm, I'm volunteering in a nursery. You know, where mothers are having their kids to be a big, goofy looking guy, you know, read books, you know. And I thought, okay, and this is what you want me to do, you know. About six months into it, I kept praying and listening. And, and now I'm hearing what they're saying. And I'm hearing what the Holy Spirit's telling me. And it's like, you know, it was like God said, you know what, go back to what you've been taught, where you came from, give that to me, you know, and I'm like, okay, so the first film that I, so about a year ago, I'm going, how in the world am I going to do any good with Christian movies? This wasn't a lot around at that time, right. and, uh, and the ones I'd watched, I'm going to be brutally honest with this, good. terrible, <laughs> and uh, I'm like, what, you know, I, I, you know, so I talked to people in the church, you know, well, we went and seen this movie, you know, whether it be John Wick or, you know, Spider-Man or something, Saturday night and then Sunday morning they're at church. And I'm going to work. But anyways, so the first call I did was for Undaunted, the Josh McDowell story. Oh, yes. And uh, so, yeah, so that was that was my first contact. And they said, a quiet spoken producer said, can you drive a car into a train that's going by? <laughs> I'm like, you have my attention. <laughs> and uh, so we discussed it. Wow. And uh I said, okay, you know, so I show up and, and uh, they kind of backed out of that. I was ready to do it. I'm ready to go. I said, you know, it wasn't a money issue. It was just, I thought, God, that's what God wanted me to do at that mm-hmm. point. So I'm ready to hit this train. We're going by 50 mile an hour. But we changed the shot. The arm come down on the cross and I hit it with the car and slid within three inches and hit the train. So we kind of simulated the whole accident. And uh, so that was, that was that. And then, uh, so it was these little signals that were, sent to me i feel in my heart from the mm-hmm. holy spirit that you know i'm here i'm here let's move on you know let's go on to the next one and then rag him up and came and uh that um i talked to dave um and, uh, that uh, for those of you who don't know rag him up that's a rich mullen story mm-hmm. so dave mullen was on the set and uh i had a role of g that's how that's how uh, rich lost his life oh. and uh so i had it i had a I had to hit a ramp at 50 mile an hour and this Jeep opened the top. And uh, so I asked Dave before the stunt, I said, how did Dave die? And he said, well, Dave always, or uh, Rich always drove these, you know, these junky Jeeps. And he said, we think the drive shaft in the front of the Jeep went into the mm. dirt and it turned him over. Well, I did the stunt and everything. Of course, the, my, the Jeep's flipping all over the place, glass everywhere, EMTs come out, fire department's there. I crawl out the back. I walk to the ramp and I look down in the drive shaft that went right next to my ramp, just the front drive shaft, laying there just like it was presented to me. And I was in tears. Oh. I mean, I'm like, I got you. I hear you. You know, so and my mom was there at that one. First time she'd ever seen me work live, scared her to death. And uh, but she, you know, uh, she, she said, she said, I know you've been doing this for a while. And, you know, it did scare me. I said, okay, mom. You know? so, so that's kind of how things went. Um, so I went beyond the mask and then went to Reliant and, uh, there's a couple of films trying to kick up right now. I've just been reading scripts here in the last mm-hmm. week and a half. And, uh, the second one I've written, I came from LA, uh, starting out really well and uh, a lot of action, a lot of violence. Yeah. So I'm like, you got me. <laughs> well, I, so. I'm, I'm with your mom on this. Cause I remember being there on the set when we were going to do the scene where you, basically you catch on fire and, uh, I don't remember ever feeling that nervous. I just, I, you know, you can feel, 
you can feel the, t the tension, I guess I want to call it. Everybody's, you know, the, there's almost a, um, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a respect for what's about to happen, you know, and, and of course we're worried about you. Uh, and, and it was, it, I've never felt so intense in anything I've done except when, when we were ready to, to light you up. And, and you take it very seriously, by the way. I, I, I saw that in you. Yeah, that's something that fire is, I've done it probably more than 500 times in my oh, life. Geez. And uh, so it's, it's, it's been different just about every time that I've done it. Cause you gotta respect it. It's fire's right. an animal. It needs to breathe. It needs to eat. And sometimes the dew point, the wind, I mean, there's so many variables that can get away from it. So if I were to inhale fire a nose, then yeah. I'm pretty much dead because everything's going to swell up. So I got to be respectful of where the fire's at. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you got it all over you and you move forward, well, everything's going to go behind you. Take a deep breath and just stop and circle back around. You see the real understanding of what the fire does. Yeah. I've seen young stunt guys panic, and it's not good. Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, but well, uh, I've done high falls on fire, um, oh. jump from. Uh, Rupp Arena in, uh, in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, about 120 feet, mm -hmm. and uh, when they did an air bag on fire, and uh, I really uh, respected it then. So, uh, wow. but, but yeah. Well, on that note, we're going to take another little break. Uh, and when we come back, let's talk about just a little bit of a, uh, of a situation that you've had happen recently. And uh, I just w I want you to share that because I really want people to, uh, to pray for you and just continue to lift you up. Uh, so you're you're willing to talk about that, right? Yes. All right. I will. Folks, don't go away. We're gonna be right back. Eighty percent of Americans want more family-friendly content. Eighty percent. So what's the solution? Twenty-four flicks on demand. That's right. 24 Flicks provides unlimited, safe, family-friendly content without profanity, nudity, sexual content, and substance abuse. You can enjoy movies, TV series, comedy, sports, and so much more. Simply go to 24flicks.com. 24 Flicks, it's your home for unlimited, family-friendly, on-demand videos. Dad? This is a lot of work. It, it might take us the entire weekend. You think this is rough? Try building one of the most massive wooden ships in history without modern tools. Go ahead, think bigger. YBL is an experience like none other. Whether you are thinking about a call into leadership and ministry or something else. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I learned a lot about having self-confidence in myself as a leader. Even though we're teenagers, we still have the power and the capacity to change the world. God can do amazing things in a very short amount of time. The material that we studied, the activities that we did, really helped us to see that. Going to YBL and hearing from professors that are my future professors and professors now, coming to Asbury is really like a continuation of what Youth Becoming Leaders was. It was really important having a group of people my age who wanted to do what I wanted to do. We kind of end up as a family, which is the best thing I think about YBL. Back to Faith on Film. What an exciting show it's been for me because uh, to, to talk about stunts and, and to talk about something that really can enhance uh, a movie, uh, it's just fun and exciting for me. And, uh, and we're here with Rick, Rick Shaw, who is a stuntman, stunt coordinator. By the way, what is the difference? A stunt coordinator is the, is the guy that's in charge of planting okay. and planning and getting the uh, uh, stunt equipment ready and hiring the people to come in mm -hmm. to perform the stunt. Okay. So their their safety is in my hands. Mm -hmm. uh, on a SAG set, we you know first ADs the, the charge of safety and then the stunt coordinators in charge of safety. So a lot of times the first AD doesn't understand what's going on in the stunt world. So Rick comes along and keeps everybody on set 
and okay. behind the scenes safe. And you, of course, um, are both. Yeah, I do both. So every once in a while, I'll get called just to do a stunt, and then there's other times okay. where I'll get called and I have to hire a group of guys and girls to uh, come in and, and perform the stunts. Now, before we started uh, the show today, you shared with me a little bit about something that you went through recently, which may or may not, I'm not sure, have something to do with your lifestyle as a stuntman. Uh, but you ended up uh, in the hospital, I think, did you? Yeah, uh, a couple months after the whole COVID thing started, I, uh, for the last 15 years prior to that, it felt weird. I knew something was wrong, and I started getting these thoughts that I knew I wasn't supposed to think this way. Mm -hmm. And the thoughts were suicidal. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why? Why is this going on? You know. And uh, so finally, uh, it kept progressing. Uh, the loved ones around me got nervous and they kind of stood back they'd seen somebody they love change and i had no answer for them i thought well i'm getting old who knows and uh, so a couple months go by and i come down southern michigan from up north and i went to a large hospital and um, i went in to the er and i passed out and i woke up and i'm in a hospital bed connected the lines and tubes and uh they told me i had a uh, parasite which was not the dangerous part of it. That led to the big problem was a small clot in the right side of my head. And uh, so there was some contusions from over the years. And um, so every once in a while I noticed I'd get this clear liquid out of my right nostril. And I thought, well, is it, you know, being cold and going, you know, and then uh, warm and, you know, how that happens. But uh, so after they went in, took the clot out, and then they uh, they put a little bit of platelets up in it to, to uh, the brain fluid leaking out of my brain sac, I guess you would call it. And they sprayed some uh, platelets up there to block mm -hmm. that. So over the years, you know, from time I played sports in high mm -hmm. school, I got knocked out. I raced motorcycles, got knocked out. We never had concussion protocols. Even in the stunt business, I just kind of shook it up, got up, finished my day, went home, crashed, and... Uh, so within the last probably 10, 15 years, I just, all I wanted to do was sleep. And my mood was just all over the map. And I'd just be walking along feeling great, and I would just throw up, you know. And for whatever reason, I could not put the symptoms together. And uh, the people around me were a little, you know, a little mm -hmm. nervous about what was going on as well. And I went in, you know, and the doctors, a lot of the doctors missed it. So eventually, they, they, they found the right people. Uh, they corrected the yeah, idea yeah. of the, the, the problem. And uh, IQ was taken, so I think my IQ actually got better after <laughs> after that was taken out. I always thought I was kind of well, crazy for doing some of the stuff I've done, but um, yeah, but as a stuntman, as old as I am, it's uh, and, uh, knowing what to do and how to do it is the main key. So. Well, I'll tell you what, I have never done this on Faith on Film ever, and it's, it's I've done 80 shows now. Uh, and that is that I feel compelled for some reason to just pray for you right now. Uh, again, this is the first time. Uh, who knows? Maybe there'll be more of those. But if you don't mind, I'd like to just say a quick prayer for you. Sure. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, to lift up Rick. Uh, what he does is very necessary for, for uh, movies. It just elevates the, the quality of a movie by having some realistic stunts in there. Uh, but, Father, it's also a very dangerous work, and so I just lift him up to you right now, and I ask that you not only protect him as he continues to do this, but heal him from heal, heal him completely from uh, from what was uh, affecting him this this past year. Um, and uh, again, may may he just continue to live a good, fruitful, happy life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. There's. There's another first for Faith on Film. I got a stuntman, okay. and we prayed on the show. <laughs> All right. So uh, if people want to just kind of follow you and find out what all you're doing, what movies you might be a part of, uh, or even just also send you an email with a prayer, where, how, would they, how would they follow you? Um, I get my, my personal email out, which is Shaw underscore Richard at yahoo.com. Okay. I'm also an internet movie database under Richard, Rick Shaw stunts, and you'll see all the listings. And okay. um, I also, uh, Facebook, I also have Stuntman Rick Shaw Facebook page. So if you want to contact me, you're more than uh, welcome to do that. 
Um, I, I love getting questions from filmmakers about how things are done, and um, I'd be more than happy to answer as many as I get, or at least I try my best. Excellent. Well, if, you, uh, if you're out there, you're a filmmaker, by the way, and you want somebody uh, that you can uh, have them, you know, run around with fire coming out. I don't know. <laughs> Rick's, Rick's the man. <laughs> Rick's, Rick's the man. Rick, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it, was, it was a real pleasure ch chatting with you today. You're welcome, and it was nice seeing you again, Mike. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Love the classic movies? Well, 24 Flicks has you covered. You can watch some of your favorite movies and TV shows you've known and loved. Watch anytime and anywhere and as many times as you want. Simply go to 24flicks.com and start watching now. 24 Flicks is your home for unlimited, family-friendly, on-demand videos. Meet Will. Will wants to make a movie based in Bible times. No, maybe a Western. Well, maybe an apocalyptic movie. A biblical era apocalyptic Western? That would be so original. But Will needs some sweet sets to bring it to life, and Will is 25,352 miles away from any of those sweet, sweet sets. Or so he thinks. Fortunately for Will, there is a solution. Introducing Capernaum Studios, your ticket to realistic locations and everything else you need to bring your period accurate story to life. Book a tour today, like Will, who is, um, yet to leave. They say it's really big. What's really big? Those aren't silly. Oh, I know. It's bigger than the size of our house. It's a little bigger than that. Like the size of two houses. <gasps> no two houses and a spaceship. I bet it's even bigger than the castle. Don't be ridiculous. That's impossible. Welcome back. If you want to write Richard, just write him at Shaw underscore Richard at Yahoo.com. That's Shaw underscore Richard at Yahoo.com. If you want to write me, you can write me at FaithOnFilmTV at gmail.com. That's FaithOnFilmTV at gmail.com. And of course, you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at FaithOnFilmTV. And if you want to catch some of my past episodes and my past interviews, just go to YouTube.com and look for FaithOnFilmTV. Well, until next week, take care.